Thank you so much for joining us on the Support After Abortion Men and Healing podcast. The goal of this podcast and our video is to provide an avenue for men to both start their healing journey and continue their walk. We've all been impacted by various things in life, but abortion and the experience that it has can have a sizable impact on one's life. And I'm so grateful today to have Joseph Roebuck with us. He's agreed to share his story and give us a real feel for what it's like to walk the healing journey. So Joseph, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Nathan. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. As you mentioned, my name is Dr. Joseph Roebuck. Uh, I'm currently living in the uh, Tampa, Florida area. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, uh, former Michigan Wolverine. And uh, I'm just real happy to be able to share this time with you. Thank you. And I appreciate your willingness to, to share your story. Uh, as we've heard from men, both together and others, uh, sharing the story is part of the healing journey. So uh, would you mind just taking us back to the... Um, abortion experience that you've you've walked through and in particular Joseph since that experience could you highlight some of the impact uh, that it's had on your life uh, sure so I was um, involved in a intimate long-term relationship when I was in graduate school uh, started about 1981 and about 1985, uh, I would have been about 26 years old. Um, my girlfriend, her name is Jackie, uh, came to me with the news that she was pregnant. It was an unplanned pregnancy. We had been, you know, taking steps by we, I mean, she was taking steps to try to avoid getting pregnant. And it's a long time ago, but, you know, my recollection was I was disturbed. Um, I was really troubled by you know, what I could do to get out of the situation because it didn't fit my plans at the time. I was in grad school, kind of focused on the work I was doing. I was an aspiring PhD student. Um, and so I, as I recall, yeah, I sheepishly offered to marry her and she wasn't in favor of that because of her own life experiences. She had been, uh, she, she was raised by her grandmother when, when she was living with her, I, 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 she was living with her grandmother. Uh, and to make a long story short, her parents got divorced and her thought was, I wouldn't want to put a child through the trauma, you know, the separation abandonment that she had gone through. Um, Really what ended up happening then was she went on a track to, you know, go through with the abortion and I just had a conscience problem. I, I couldn't support, you know, in some sort of a materialistic way, I, I couldn't pay for it. I, I couldn't take her to the abortion clinic to do it. And I remember, for example, going to the hotel that she was staying at with a girlfriend. She was away on vacation for, you know, everybody else. And seeing her after the abortion and just feeling like really separated. I, I can't, I'm part of this, but I don't know how, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. The, uh, the immediate aftermath of that was we tried to put it behind us. We didn't talk about it. Um, we went on for a couple more years. And I hadn't really processed very much of the aftermath of that, um, now I know things that I didn't know then, because in my life, I had people I could go talk to. Uh, and I had experiences with my own older brothers. I won't go into details about that, but um, they had experience with unwed pregnancies and you know how to do things like that. But I, it was her wish and I was really kind of ashamed and didn't want to, um, didn't want to own the situation. I never talked to anybody about it other than my girlfriend at the time. And that led to a lot of the other things that we're going to talk about. That's such a difficult experience to walk through. Um, you mentioned that your relationship 
uh, went on for a couple of years. Right. And then since, since that time, until you started your healing journey, there is a portion of your life that you had other, you've experienced other impacts of abortion. How would you kind of highlight some of those uh, challenges that you faced? Well, again, in retrospect, it, it, it's, it's really quite remarkable. I think, you know, the relationship ended traumatically. And by that, I mean, it was like, boom, um, you're not going to see each other anymore. Uh, and I was, I was devastated by that because again, in retrospect, I was really in a bad place. I was very codependent on her. The, uh, the relationship had gone through problems with intimacy, problems with trust. Uh, you know, we, we had a lot of issues with communication and so forth. And I think, again, in retrospect, what, what I found myself doing is wandering. Um, and wandering in graduate school can be dangerous because if you follow your curiosity long enough, you find yourself spending a lot of time studying and going down you know, some of the uh, blind ends of your research and so forth. But as it turned out, I ended up getting two master's degrees before I got my doctoral degree. And the doctoral degree took longer because I couldn't quite put things together um, the right way. Let me just come alongside you for clarity. What, I'm, what I believe you're saying is, the, and again, retrospect, hindsight is 2020. As you look back, the quote, extra time in, in grad school and pursuing your PhD was more of a way of dealing with it from a cognitive perspective, uh, maybe Absolutely. even a distraction, not to, give it, not to give it a distraction, but to lose yourself in your work. If people don't have a research mind, people become workaholics, for example, and that's right. a way to take your mind off it. Is that what you're saying? I don't want to put words I, in there. No, no I, you know, I'm glad you said that, Nathan, because it's a good way to think about it. Um, you follow your curiosity. Um, I was a hard worker. I was uh, more than willing to spend the time and effort, but it became a confidence problem. It became a uh, uh, an issue with trying to maintain creativity, focus, and energy all at the same time. Okay. And so what might have taken me five years ended up taking me, I don't know, another six or eight years. Okay. All told, I was in college at the University of Michigan for 17 years. You know, not many people do that. Uh, and it, again, in retrospect, what it was for me was my workaholism, my uh, avoiding separating myself from um, various things, including relationships. You know, during that time, I, I didn't start having another serious relationship probably until about six years later, you know, 1992. Okay. I graduated in 94. It was a big, you know, push at the end. And so and it affected just, long Just fill in the blanks on that. What I hear you saying is the reason for that is there's been damage done. I heard you say damage to trust, damage. This is not your words, but an example would be damage to self-worth. And absolutely. Self-esteem, self-worth, self okay. you know, it's powerful. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's safe to say that my self-centeredness got in the way mm -hmm. because I was really focused on myself. You know, it's, mm -hmm. let's face it. It's a little narcissistic. It's a little self-serving, selfish. Okay. And when you're in that mode, you know, if you're trying to be in a relationship, you know, sacrifice, you know, give and take, um, it doesn't all, <laughs> It's, it's a problem, okay? Let's just say it, it doesn't work. Right, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So the, uh, the things I did early on when I really couldn't put it together was, you know, at some point I, been, I remember I was having, you know, problems getting focused and figuring out a dissertation topic and so forth. And I went and I sought counseling. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to a male counselor. I remember I was in an HMO and it was like 12 visits and then, you know, go out and fly. And if you have a problem again, come back. And I remember the name of the doctor. I remember where I saw him. I remember abortion never came up. Hmm. 
But we did focus, for example, on the subject of abandonment. And abandonment is a big part of my issue with abortion. I mean, how I was maybe abandoned, uh, I didn't have all of the uh, loving mother needs that I had as a child uh, met, and then how I abandoned my child in the abortion and what part I played in that. I think, uh, I think at some point I knew I wanted more, I, need, I needed more, I hadn't put the, I couldn't connect the dots, okay? So I started volunteering in activities that I thought were, yeah, gonna make me feel better, feel mm. like connected, add meaning to my life. Mm. I, I started with uh, um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Now, my first little brother is now in his 40s. Mm. And that was a very enriching um, experience. I feel like it gave me some honor. I felt, I felt more like a father or a big brother. Okay. Oh, I love that. That's really heartfelt. And it's, yeah. it's uh, in hindsight, to use your words, in that retrospect, you were looking to fill that wound or fill that father wound that you, you and I have talked about separately and right. about a mother, mother wound and, and then how you made that connection, just a quick summary to, to the lost fatherhood opportunity that you have. And I just want to relate to our, our listeners, our viewers, that other men I've spoken with have shared similar ways, almost this compulsion but in a good way to want to give back this not always sure why you're doing it but like you said joseph it's really designed to kind of fill this need and gain gain something that was lost absolutely and yeah. it was a win-win-win so mm -hmm. um i'm very grateful mm -hmm. that that was part of my life i did That's other a, let did. me just bring you up to the to when we started to get to know each other uh, in more recent times just Talk about the light bulb moment or series of moments that began to give you the perspective of now, you've said a few times, looking back. It was kind of your first additional step towards healing. Can you just share with us your, your first few steps? How will help people who are listening right, have so an idea what they can do? Bulb, for light bulb moment, we're going to jump to 2011. So that's more than 10 years later. Okay. And I, I was reaching out for volunteer opportunities in the abortion healing ministries. Hmm. And I reached out to, you know, my, I, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic. I belong, I was belonged to a parish in, in our area. I reached out to the parish and I found, you know, I ended up talking to some people and um, there were opportunities to pray the rosary and, um, basically pray about abortion. And that wasn't really where my heart was at. I wanted to get involved with abortion healing people who were trying to find a way to connect the dots and get better. Okay. Uh, and so I ended up going up a level to the level of the diocese here in, in the Tampa area. And I met a wonderful person and I said, I'm ready to start volunteering. I, I think, you know, I could help. And she, gently guided me towards Rachel's Vineyard Retreat, which is a weekend experience where you're focused on healing after abortion. And I didn't want to do it. I mean, it was a, it was a, a withdrawal. Well, I don't really think I need to do that. This is, you know, I, you know, I could probably volunteer to be on the team that helps with people. And their policy was, she was very gentle about it. You have to go through a retreat first and then there's more. So I ended up going on it some four months later. And, you know, it's a long story, but I ended up going on the retreat. And when I was there, it was transformative. It was huge. I connected the dots and I found a mission at the same time because I was the only man who was there for healing. So there were about 11 women. There was me in the beginning. We were looking at each other, trying to figure out how this was going to go. And by the end, we were all, I don't know, I, I, there was no difference. I felt like they learned from me. I learned from them. And it was a different experience for the, both genders being there. Let's just spend a moment um, back in 2011 when, at this retreat moment. So one of the things that is motivating us to do this podcast uh, nationwide, we know it's very unusual for a man to, to want healing. 
you know, men in general, we keep things tucked, tucked away. Our society would say we don't really have any repercussions uh, from an abortion decision or early childhood uh, uh, wounds that we would have. But look at your boldness to go, maybe even, even some fear, but you did it. What happened, or just an example in that Rachel's Vineyard retreat where you're, where you're kind of set aside from all other distractions. What was it that connected the dots? Do you, do you recall? Yeah, uh, the, the, the retreat uses a number of basically uh, spiritually guided exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, they're centered around gospel passages, but then after you read the gospel passage, like for instance, um, uh, the woman at the well or um, the good Samaritan, uh, there's a guided experience. It's sort of like meditation. With, 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 we enter that, that story mm -hmm. as individuals and how we would feel and how we would feel, for instance, if Christ was interacting with us in those moments. So you put yourself in that story through like a visualization. Exactly. And exactly. Emotional yeah. connection. And so, and so, you know, your emotions, it opens a space. It's, it is, there's, there's music you know, gentle meditative music in the background. You're in a community of people who are all doing the same thing, okay? It opens a space to grieve and to deal with specific issues along the way. And when we're, the way this is structured, this retreat was structured, you come out of the weekend having really connected with your child. So for example, I named my child, his name is Paul. I got a certificate of life that was signed by the priest who was on the team taking, taking us through this mission. Um, I identified quite a few things when I was there. The thing that resonated with me the most, and I remember talking to the male social worker who was part of the team. He was the other guy, okay? Um, where are all the men? I mean, how, you know, how can I be the only man here? I felt like a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. on top of feeling, you know, that I had a problem connecting the dots from abortion. Mm -hmm. And that stayed with me ever since, because I know there are men out there. I've met them. Uh, I have uh, a great deal of love that extends in their direction. And that is something that's been building over the years. I, I, you know, I wasn't the person I was, for instance, when I was in graduate school. Uh, I was more of an introvert, thinker, not feeler, that sort of thing. And the Rachel's Vineyard Retreat is now the nidus that I keep pointing back to. It started my relationship that's, with my son. That's that's pivotal. That's pivotal. And and at the time that over the time that we've known each other, I've seen your passion grow and your focus continue to increase. So again, I just want to say thank you for sharing and relating to men who are watching this. Um, maybe we could just move into a brief question and answer between sure. us. And, and these, um, I know you're not prepared for these questions, but they're not going to be too, too difficult for you um, to answer. So for men who are watching, what would your advice be to help them take the next step? Let's say they've not, maybe they have visited a counselor like you did for a present, a different presenting issue, maybe it was alcoholism or broken relationships or can't figure out why they're always um, changing spouses, let's say, or girlfriends, and things always end badly. Abortion hasn't been identified as a, an impact point. What would you say to the guy who's maybe sought some help, but hasn't really focused in on the abortion? What would you would re recommend them to do next? I think a, a good place to start is to trust your feelings, even if they seem foreign or alien or uh yeah not the the way you can justify taking certain risks okay the uh the risk involved is small compared to the benefits that you can accrue wow it, it's a great investment wow. okay um, so, so embrace the i'm going to summarize that embrace the awkwardness embrace I've heard somebody say, just say, say to yourself, it's going to be a little scary. It's, it's uncertain. Embrace it. But so there, so there are dots 
that I hadn't connected early on that I started to connect. And over the course of time, I tried a lot of things. I, mean, I tried talking to different counselors. I eventually got a Christian counselor after the Rachel's Vineyard retreat. And you know, I still have a relationship with that person. Okay. Um, the volunteer activities put me in close proximity to people I wouldn't have otherwise socialized with, mm. much less interacted with you know, on, on some sort of a team effort. Okay. Um, I think that uh, spiritual connections are important. So if you are part of a faith-based community, open up about these things, you know, talk to the people you trust. I found, I eventually found a lot of solace, for instance, in talking to my mother and father and my siblings, mm. owning all of those. Wow. It's kind of hard to, you know, go out and talk to people about it in more public ways like this without telling your family. And I got over that hump. I couldn't do it at the time, but afterwards, wow. you know, now they're very supportive of postal board manager. Wow. Let's uh, let me uh, ask you one final question. Then I'm going to just add some concluding um, resources for women who are watching, uh, women who might have a a partner in their life who who's had an abortion in their past. Or, or maybe even what we tend to find are leaders of pregnancy centers who are unsure how to speak to men. What would be the advice that you might say to a woman who has a man in her life or in a counseling setting to help create a situation that would invite the man to want healing or share his story? And this is really the thrust of, of my spiritual journey right now, finding a way to connect with women who have an influence on, on men. It could be her husband, it could be a brother, it could be um, just a guy you know and have a good friendship with, okay? It's hard to take that step because men interact with men in different ways than they do with women, just like women interact with women in different ways, okay? The, the reality is, is we use metaphors to talk about the things that are bothering us we want we want to act like a rock we want to be the guard you know the protector okay um sometimes it's you know my my issue was i, I was just a separated experience it's sort of like this out of body experience i was part of that but really was i part of it how did it you know how do i know okay and so create a space to talk about it start a dialogue refer for additional help, you know, could be counselors, could be spiritual advisors, priests, ministers. Thank you. It's really great if you have a family member you can talk to about it because that's, that, that's, that leads to some deep healing. So some things that we've talked about offline and for those watching, uh, you'll see this in the future, but Support After Abortion is doing a consumer-based research study throughout the U.S., and we've gotten some preliminary insight that men who've been impacted by abortion often share the story with someone else who's also experienced loss. Could be a miscarriage loss, could be another abortion story, or even a death that they've experienced, because that sense of pain and loss is a shared emotion. And so I would just say to those listening, women and men, if, if you've been dealt a hand that you would say, why did I have it? It could be that you're a vehicle to help somebody else in their healing journey. I would say, Joseph, that's part of the reason you're here. You've, right. you've experienced something that you didn't want. You didn't wake up saying, I want this in the life, but now you're at a place where the Lord is using you as, a, as part of a solution for other people to get healing. And so again, I just want to say thank you for being here. For those who are watching, please visit supportafterabortion.com. There is a confidential a phone number or form on the contact page, and you can reach out to help. We have people who can recommend confidential resources right in the area that you're at. You can also look under virtual groups on our website and be able to be in a healing group, both in person or, as I mentioned, virtually where you can walk through things like unraveled roots or keys to hope and healing. These are resources that Support After Abortion has written or partnered with that helps 
create a foundation to get you started on your healing journey. So we look forward, Joseph, to having you back in the future. Thank you again for sharing your story. And thank we look you. forward. Thank you for being here. We look forward to you all joining us on our next broadcast.